There's there's a saying in Hollywood that there's there's no such thing as a third act here. I have a third act, a big third. I'm looking at you. Is that a third act? I feel better than I did in my second act, quite frankly. Many of the reasons is I have to lead a cleaner life. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a stroke lying out there, flat out there. I fell on the floor and I heard Ella Fitzgerald in the background singing It's a Wonderful World. And when the ambulance came to take me away, I, the two guys, the ambulance said, hey, we better get this guy over to see this before he's DOA. And they put on the siren, I see the white light. And 15 hours later, I awaken, I'm looking up uh, in the sky, and I see white, I thought, hey, maybe I made heaven. Well, I didn't die, I didn't make heaven, but I came out Quasimodo, I was totally paralyzed. I had three strokes in two days. And a man named Sumner Redstone, who was chairman of the board of Viacom, he, many years ago, suffered a terrible tragedy. He was almost burned to death. And he flew out from Boston and held my hand right in the ICU, let him in, because he knew he was the only person who could encourage me to live. Is you're going to make it. I made it and you can make it. And if I can make it burnt to death, you can make it through this stroke. Then he told me about eight months later, you know, I never thought you would go through, Bob, because when I used to walk out of the ICU, the doctors always shook their head like this. It's not going to happen, Mr. Redstone. Just one more little stroke and he's out. Call us before you come back. He didn't call, he just came back the next day. He was there. This goes beyond loyalty, goes beyond friendship. It has to do with character. I ain't met a guy who died who's come back, and I got to feel that when you're here, you have to take as much as you can out of life. There are three things that are most important in my life. The sun, sports, and sex. Well, I can't take the sun too well, which I used to love because I have to take pills to thin my blood, etc., so I stay alive. My, my tennis game, as you know, was never that good, but I could play. It was good. As far as sex goes, um, well, how can I answer that one? Uh, <laughs> um, my, libido, my libido is fine. My dexterity, well, I don't know. But I'm still there. You have to get rid of the trampoline, is that? Uh, is the that trampoline right? goes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, if good luck is when opportunity meets preparation, what's bad luck? Being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, let me tell you something, I've had that luck too. And you don't need preparation for that. <laughs> you went through some things that, I, I mean, honestly, people still shake their heads that, that you survived, not just survived in a literal sense, but survived in this business, survived as a functioning human being with the, yeah. the cocaine bust, the, the cocaine. controversy over Cotton Club. Uh, cocaine, fraud, murder, prostitution, I'm trying to think of what else. Now, that's well, those are kind of, that's many of the, d the, the seven few, deadly few, sins few, are in there. Them, right? When my kid graduated high school, the day of his graduation, it said, Robert Evans involved in murder. And I watched my kid walk down with 1,400 other kids and his father was standing there as a murderer. That's when I decided to write my book. I didn't care if two people wrote the, read the book. I want to let my kid know who his old man really was. I mean, you can't lie to a kid. You can't get a kid in any way, they read right through you. I wrote a, all about my warts, my bad things and my good things, but I'll tell you this, I let them know who I was for good or bad. And it was all from the gut. There was a cathartic, not at all, it was painful. I didn't care. That was the only legacy I could leave him. I had no wealth to leave him. At least I want him to know his old man father was and how much his father loved him when you were going back through all that and forcing yourself to think about the memories and the bad memories is there one that stands out as your finest moment your best moment yeah you know I went through a stroke after that I wouldn't even let my kids see me because I was just, I was just in a terrible shape. 
and then I went into a terrible depression. And then when my kids saw the movie, he never discussed the book. He, he just threw his arms around me and said, I'm so proud of you, Daddy. I always had that part of both. Yeah. That would be my finest moment. Made it worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1979, I was worth $11 million in cash. In 1989, I was worth $37. In 1979, I was worth uh, $11 million in cash. It's a lot of money, especially in 79. Mm -hmm. In 1989, I was worth $37. I had to work my way back, and it ain't easy doing it mm -hmm. at that age. Uh, I should have been rich, man, but I'm a terrible businessman. I'm a bad executive, too, real bad executive. I, like, I don't like to get, a, get up early in the morning. People have breakfast appointments. I don't believe in them. I, uh, I like to get up when I want to get up. I learned that from Daryl Zanuck. He says, don't worry what time you get up. Work as late as you want. It's what you do when you get there. Daryl used to